welcome back guys so moved on a little bit I actually got the instrument panel into the nose glazing and hopefully you can see the reflection of the gloss varnish in the face of the dials I can get the light to shine on them so that's just been fastened in you can see on the top there this will obviously be um, fuselage color so it's tacked in with some super glue and then I've wicked in some slightly watered down PVA just to act as uh, an extra bit of bond for the super glue um, so it'll give it a bit of shock resistance but that's actually looking really really nice um, as he drops it there we go and then also you probably won't be able to see this but I've on this part here if I can get the focus there we go I've dropped a little bit of gloss varnish in the face of those dials just to help make them pop a little bit so they're actually all ready to go in now I need to put this one in first and this is <laughs> Ravel's really bloody awful instructions to be fair with you um, so we can see here there's the instrument panel going in there um, that was the page before I think all right here we go so this piece goes in here and it is just saying roughly going here which is here on the model so that's the next job to do and this is one of the jobs I wasn't looking forward to now luckily this is obviously going to be painted so you won't see the glue joint which for us is a mercy um, the attachment parts on this are huge So what I am needing to do with this part is make sure it's got a good flat finish. I'll just zoom you out a little bit. Let me get more of the model in. So using a, a file, very, very gently holding it. And with minimal pressure. That's it. So let's clean that up nicely. So this part then, just get rid of all the dust. And this is the, the one thing that always worries me about this aircraft, is dust and these clear canopies. So I think we'll be able to use a little bit of Ravel contactor on this. Just down the center. You oh, coming out. Oh. Right. So this part is going in here. Luckily, you can reach in here, help yourself in with a pair of tweezers to hold this part in place. And a press, though, we find it doesn't really want to glue very well at all. No surprise there. Okay, a bit of upward pressure. There's definitely some glue gripped here on the front not much on the back so we're going to need to we need to do something with that the Ravel contractor contact that gives us its due is sticking very quickly so we just get a bit more right in the back and right at the front and we'll put a drop in the middle 
Right, take two. And reposition it. And we've got a good amount of glue on that. Happy with that. So we can just hold that in place now for a couple of minutes while the contactor glue, glue cures up and there we go that's it gripped now with that being a hot glue that's going to hold that part there we shouldn't need to worry about that Excellent. And that gives us the opportunity then to try this up. We can see just how much cabling we need to remove. Okay. What we can do is we can do it like this. So I think the cable is supposed to turn the corner, maybe. So let's turn the corner that way. That'll go in there like so. Okay, and then we should be able to get in here and just work the cable in into the fuse buzzer box at the back. So, excellent. We've actually got the cable in the right length. Right, so we'll let this dry up and cure off. That needs to cure off. And then we'll come in once it's done that and get the front canopy taped in place ready for getting it glued in so yeah we're moving on well excellent see you back shortly right guys we're back now you can see i tried to do this on camera but it really was proven to be quite difficult indeed so just till i get it right because obviously working with the glazing parts we would need to get it right i have um used Revell contactor so we put a generous bead obviously not overly but we filled the step joint here right the way around got the canopy got it in place clicked it in place and then we've used these four pieces of tape strapped it down and um, then gently as I said I was going to do uh, wicked in some extra thin so we've actually got a really good fit i'm really quite happy with that i don't think we're going to need to do any filling but we'll check that once the glue has gone off um, <clears throat> once the glue's gone off and we can take the tape off i can then get the wiring just tucked in and around the back into the fuse buster which is just behind the the pilot seat and it's going to look really really good i'm really happy with it it's all gone together really nicely and it's such a huge relief to get over this part of the build. Um, it was the one part I was struggling with when I laid the build up. But four years later and a lot more experience, we're now at the part we've got it all together, got it on and it's glued on. So huge step forward and it's really starting to come together and look like a, a yeah, obviously a HQ 111, but it's really starting to look pretty, pretty impressive. So. We'll leave that dry. We'll come back in the morning once it's all cured up, take the tape off and we'll have a look what we've got and then we can get these last bits done before we get it finally masked up and primed, ready for painting. So, see you again shortly. Welcome back guys. So, um, it's been about 12 hours since we glued up this canopy 
let's get and have a look and see how we've gotten on with it. So with a little bit of trepidation, we're going to go in here and get this mask in lifted up. Gently pull back because we don't want to pull the masks that's already on. Okay, it's looking not too bad so far. think we are good so we've got a really nice join around the top which is good there is a little bit of a gap here but it is a thing and nothing we should be able to fill that with a little bit of um, Mr. Surfacer maybe. I'll just take out a shot a minute when we turn it around. And if we look at the bottom, we've got an excellent join. So I'm really quite happy about that. And if we try fitting the nose piece. There we go. So we now have a closed canopy aircraft, which is excellent. Now what I have noticed is there's a little bit of hairline cracking here on the front. I don't know if the camera can pick that up and get the right angle on it, actually, maybe. So you can just see here, there's a hairline crack. So what I'm going to do is just very, very carefully wick in some extra thin. I'm just going to pull the canopy mask back just a fraction. Just enough that we don't, it is into the glazed part. So a lot of it will be hidden with paint. But there's going to be a small crack visible um, and there's no way of getting around it and I don't believe there's any way of getting a replacement part so that's a shame but you know on the grand scheme of things if we can wick a bit of glue into it and get it to bond back together then that will hopefully stop it cracking further I'm using the quick drying just so it doesn't um, go too far into the glazing panel. But we're trying to get a decent amount in there so it will fuse it back together and stop that crack from propagating further. But it is old styrene, so you know it's maybe not surprising that there's a little bit of crack going on. That's probably enough. So we'll just let that air off before I reattach the the mask. Um, so the last job really to do is, I'm going to have to do it off camera just for getting the ease of it, is getting the, tidying up the wiring, getting it put up into this corner here where the fuse box is. Um, but it does look quite nice you have a peak down there you can see all the wiring at the back of the console so it adds a lot of detail to the aircraft which otherwise was lacking um, it's a nice streamlined fit so I'm actually really quite happy with that so what to do next well obviously you've got to mask this piece up and get it on before we paint uh, so that's a job to do um, I have made one of the undercarriages just to see how it goes together to see that I can actually do it without having to glue it into the wheel well we can um, what I also have for this kit uh, is a set of replacement wheels so there's the kit wheels very nondescript fully inflated what we've got here is 
a ridge tire with a bulged bottom so it looks like you've got weight on wheels which is really nice and that's quite heavy solid resin piece so that just fits as a direct replacement from the kit wheels so that's another job to do um we need to paint the interior of this so i'll do that quickly and then we can mask this off just to protect the interior we've got to get all the masks onto the windows got to finish masking up these windows get the window panel for here which i am actually going to have slid back um just so you can get a look inside there um so that's to get on but well, we need to mask this up somehow so it may be a question of just putting a piece of masking tape over this and then we can touch this in with a brush after don't know i'll have a think about that um and then yeah what else have we got to do we need to probably mask up if i just yeah I've got to take it off camera to turn it over it's that big so we need to put um we need to get masking in here just to protect the inside from overspray we need to mask up all these windows here and some of these are pretty poor to be fair they're not a very good glazing part but they're in and they're not coming out so we've just got to work with it we need to put some masking over this bombay so we don't get any paint in there um, i'm not too fussed about the um, wheel wells it might be that we can use the something i might try is seeing if we can use the wheel well covers as a mask but i don't know how well that's going to work because they've got the the mountain points for when it is glued open so it might be that we just have to do some paint avoidance we'll use some templates or something just a bit of card or something to hold up against when we're spraying so we don't get any overspray in but we can worry about that when we get to it and i've still got to paint silver here and get the glazing on for the landing light so a couple of few bits to do so what i'm going to do is i'll do the tricky ones off camera just for the size of the aircraft um and then we'll come back and we'll look at or we'll paint the interior of the um wheel well doors and the roof piece at the same time um i'll get all the masking done i'm sure you don't really want to watch somebody mask up stuff um, and then we'll come back and we'll look to get in some primer down for paint, which is a real huge step forward. So we'll see you again shortly. All right, folks, we're back and we're looking at the second of the main undercarriage struts. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten parts. It's not too bad. First thing to do is to actually get it, the main parts joined together. Um, I've taken the time to get them all off the sprue and to clean up the the most of the parts in regards to um, just bird burring. I had to do a little bit of repair work on this part here. Uh, it just broke off the end. It's gone. So it's been rumbling around in the box that much. So it is when 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 it's built, it's quite a substantial um, set of undercarriage. Right, got a little blockage here by the looks of it. There we go. Let's free that up. So parts that have got a reasonably good size um, mating surface, I do tend to like to use Revell contactor, especially with the uh, applicator. It does make a good job of it. I suppose this, the nearest thing to this stuff is Tamiya's uh, white top glue. As a polystyrene cement when we get it's got really good grip and grab so when you um when you 
press it together you know those parts are solid together as soon as you put these two parts together it really does strengthen up the undercarriage so we'll just make sure that they're lined up on the bottom both sides which they are and then what you want to do if you want to get it just to kick off a little bit quicker I don't know how it works but it seems to work that if you just over brush it with a bit of Tamiya Extra Thin it helps to kick off the Ravel contactor you end up with a very very strong joint which is what we want right so that's that you've got it is you can only go one way so this piece goes in the back here and then we've got this central piece here and you've got the strut here yeah so that bit goes here and it goes into those two parts there and there I'm trying to get this in focus so there's the main sort of support legs and that glues into there and what I did on the last one is I actually tried to put this together so fit the parts into the respective parts on the uh, on the aircraft get it together and then just let it cure up a moment and then that way we've got the undercarriage we can take off paint off the kit separate we can put it back in once the kit has been built and there's a couple of small parts to do there's a couple of shackles to go on the front here and they just point forward they're a good fit they just drop into place nicely I found that Ravel plastic seems to react quite nicely to the time you're extra thin they're a good match together This is quite old plastic now, we're talking turn of the century, early 2000s, when this kit was tooled. So the plastic's coming up to be 20 year old, so it's getting, yeah, it's getting a bit of age about it. Right, so this piece goes in here. There are parts needed to... Um, lock it in place but obviously they go in when you're ready to fit the parts yeah okay we'll just leave that there for a moment so the next one that goes in is this okay not quite sure it goes in the bottom somewhere what it locks into again yeah Oh yeah. So they are universal these. So this is this side's one. Right, so we've got this piece here. Okay, so that is supposed to glue onto there. got this brace here so we've got that brace there that glues onto there that then supports this off the cockpit floor it's really sorry if you can't see this because I'm struggling to see it here so let's get a bit of glue 
add this part. It is molded to go in a certain position, like a certain angle, which is fine. Just make sure it's square. So there's a hole right in the roof of the undercarriage bay, a locating hole. I'm actually going to stand up here to see a bit better. Yeah, so that locates in the hole and goes there. And then these go to the back of the wheel bay and lock into here and here, like so. So Put a drop of um, Revell contactor in there. I want this to be a good strong bond. It's going to take a bit of weight with the cockpit. Sorry, the aircraft. So we want that to be a really good strong part. So we get those two parts in there like so. Just hold it a moment, let it grip. Just get a bit of time you're extra thin, that'll help kick it off. Right, so this is the tricky bit. And it's tricky because not only is it big, I'm fighting with the camera. And I'm fighting with the parts. That's why I purposely built one of these off camera <laughs> to try and make it a bit more educational for anyone else on camera. And I'm just showing you how much of a blooming balls up I'm doing, really. Right, let's get some adhesion going on there. Just want that glue to bite, yet to remain supple enough that we can maneuver the parts in place so we locate that one there we can hold that and then this we need to get it into there so a pair of tweezers check where the hole is the other side, so it's quite low down. This is where I'm out of light as well. So we'll get a bit of a blinky on that. Okay, there we go. That's it in its hole. Of course, to get it in one side, you lose the other. really don't want to play ball tonight. There's the hole there. Just use the tweezers and check that it's clear. It's not got any flash in it. Right, try again.
this is where perseverance is going to pay off if I can just get this to locate in its location hole we'll get a good result it is proving to be somewhat of a challenge so I'm just going to go and take and clean it up a little bit with a file we'll just chamfer the uh, locating pin probably not needing much put a finer point on it we'll try again Okay, we've got it this time. I'll just push that home. It's good. That's firmed up the undercarriage supports perfectly. So we've got the center piece in. Bring that to where it's supposed to be there. Okay. That leg goes there. So the next thing to do now is we can get the main undercarriage leg in here and we can actually focus on together there really is a fiddly old bloody construction there's no denying it it's a pain in the hoop absolute pain in the hoop part could do what we could do in the interest of not putting you all to sleep completely is we could use a tiny touch of super glue let it work for our advantage so what we could do is if we put a drop of super glue on the locating points and I'm not using a lot but just using a small amount that will easily break off when needed so if we put that on those locating points get that there and hold it in place where it's finally going to get assembled to then that will hold it rigid enough for us to get the rest of the gear supported So, tiny bit of super glue there. And let's just hold it in place whilst it cures up. And hope 
that it's going to help us, which I do think it is. Right, so this leg here is the one I repaired. It's just going to have to waggle around a little bit and actually needs a bit more super glue. There we go. There's plenty on a little bottle. So our applicator can actually grip some. So we'll just hold this side in place. Ah, see, it's not enough. So let's try again. We'll drop there. Let's drop on the other side. The super glue being super glue is easy enough to clean off, scrapes off the knife blade. But if it holds the part in place enough that we can get the undercarriage assembled. We're doing really well. We'll be doing well if there's bloody glue with grip. We're really not having fun with this. This is modeling sometimes. You have to just test your patience. Just keep working at the problem. And you will overcome it. Right, that's got a grip. So you can see now where we're aiming to be with this. This piece will obviously glue here. So now we need to get this part of the undercarriage. It needs to go in its position here. do that nicely what we'll do though I think we'll just again really small drop of super glue on the front face here not a lot all we're wanting is enough to get the part to bite in on its housing there in the right place then we can set that back and get that glued in now that isn't a lot of super glue so it will break when I need it to to get that undercarriage part off which we will need to to get the wheel on but we'll look at the wheel just in a minute So a bit extra thin in there. Make sure they're home properly into the right locating points, which they are. Quick brush again. Excellent. Right, last part to go on is this piece here. I have no idea what it's for, but it is to go on. It just goes on there. It's just one on either side. So you can see that part there. I've put on after I've painted the initial cover on the undercarriage struts. All right, I can turn that torch off because I don't need to waste the batteries there. Right. So that is the undercarriage. Not the easiest. It is a little bit fiddly, I'll be honest. However, once it's together, it's actually reasonably solid. There we go. Yeah. Now there's a couple. When I was saying about it not mattering about having a little bit of super glue here, you can see this part's here. So we've got parts 110 and 109. And they glue on and lock in both the parts that we've put a drop of super glue on so when we actually come to glue it on these will lock it in um, and we'll get a good bond proper um, but at the moment we're going to let that just cure up now what we do have is um, 
you look at this undercarriage here, then there's the original wheel. It should sit in there, which doesn't have any detail on it really to shout home about. Don't get me wrong, the hub's okay. The tire's bloody awful. So we've got here as a proper resin replacement. Um, it looks smaller. However, when you hold it up to one another, there's not that much difference in the diameter, but it's flatter in profile. So that's why it looks smaller, but it's pretty much the same size. It's got a really nice flat spot on the bottom. Um, and all we need to do there is we've got the two central hub pieces here. They have a lock and key that go together. So obviously you need to make sure you get it the right way. Um, but what you do need to do is you need to take about two mil off this piece here. You need to obviously cut down a bit further to ex extend the, the locking teeth further. Again, this one, it's just a simple case of a little bit of um, contactor because we want a good strong bond here. So you want a bit of contactor on both semicircular parts. There, it's unidirectional, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, get him pushed home, and then making sure we get it orientated the correct way. We push this part home, and we'll just rotate it until we feel the keyways lock in. Hold it together, press firm, check that the wheel still moves about the axle, which it does, which is nice. Make sure it's all square and straight, which it is. There you go. A bit of an issue there, I think, actually looking at that. It's not one to bond very well. Touch more glue then. I'm trying to go sparing because I don't obviously want to glue the tire up solid, and that's purely because I want to have a little bit of um, what movement, so we can make sure we can rotate the uh, we can rotate the flat around to the bottom once we get the undercarriage on the aircraft proper. So there we go, check that's correct again. Got it centered, wheel's free to move, excellent. Put a bit more glue on there so that will hold nicely. Again, just check that it's all square, which it is. Set it to one side. The beauty is with the flat, you can set it on the flat like that and it will hold itself up. So. That's the undercarriage, so I'm just going to let that cure up. Once it's all cured up, then I will break the super glue joints away. Uh, we'll take it off. Got a little bit of seam cleanup to do on the main legs, uh, and then we can look at actually painting it and a bit of silver foil on the oleo legs, and then we can get the wheel and tire painted and, and ready to go, and then that will be the undercarriage all set. Um, I'm not sure if there isn't a bit of photo etch for brake lines. We'll have a look at that. If needed, we can put them in if we think it's going to work, add value to the kit. But there we are. That is um, the undercarriage. So once we get that done, then the next job to do is to get and spray the interior colors on the roof and the wheel wells. We get the roof um, masked up and laid on, and then we need to mask up the landing light and then we're actually at a point where we can seriously think about laying down um, some interior RLMO2 on all the glazing to make sure all the framing's done. And then we're on to um, actually 
painting the aircraft with primer and going on to paint the aircraft with its camouflage so that's really good we're moving on on nicely so um yeah i'll get this sorted out we'll get that painted and then we'll come back and we'll look at getting some paint on these final interior exterior parts back in a moment 